Stand by for Titanfall. Hey guys, this is Saiyan here, and today I'm going to be doing a little review over Titanfall. Now, Titanfall was just released today. Um, this footage right now is actually my second game of it. Um, this is not live commentary, this is just me going back and uh, reviewing over it. So first off, this is actually the second mission in the campaign. Now, there is a campaign in um, Titanfall, but it's not like you would normally expect a campaign to be. It's not story-based. It's actually um, all done through online. Online. So it's very limited to the actual story that it does tell, but um, it's actually a pretty interesting take on it. This game is strictly multiplayer. This does not have any single player aspects at all except for the very first thing you do, which is a tutorial. That's the only time you'll be by yourself. Now, it, does, it starts off as two um, separate uh, factions, which as you can see there, there's the IMC and there's the militia. From what I've seen so far, as you start the campaign, you'll start on the IMC. That means any campaign missions you do, you'll be playing through the full IMC campaign. From what it seems like, the um, the game developers have done this on purpose because the IMC are more of the, the bad guys. They're actually the company that's trying to um, put pressure. They're basically the man, quote unquote, how you would say, like hippies would say about the government. They're the man. They're the assholes weighing down on the militia. And the militia are the... Um, the force that's trying to say no we want our freedoms we want our we don't want to have to deal with you sons of bitches uh... the imc it seems that the reason that they have the imc as the first uh, campaign missions that you start off on is because they know people as soon as they start the game are going to start off as the I or they're going to start off with campaign and so a lot of the lower level um, players end up being on the IMC team with a lot less unlocks and everything versus the militia which after you beat the IMC campaign you can go back and play the same missions but you play as the militia so you'll start off as higher levels with the militia than what you do as the IMC that actually led me to lose every fucking game that I played on campaign for IMC. Um, I did have some close games, and I did have some players that were in my lobby that were higher levels. So you can always go back and replay the IMC campaign as well. Or you can just start off playing the actual game modes themselves um, without actually having to do with the campaign. So you can't go about it that route as well. But it does seem like it. Uh, the game developers actually favored the IMC on this one. Uh, it's not, it actually did not make that big of a deal because it wasn't like I was being steamrolled at all. I still had a lot of fun. I was still able to play the game. I have yet to start the militia campaign, but I did enjoy the IMC campaign. Um, it, I will say that a lot of the dialogue actually goes on while you're playing the game. So you don't actually end up paying attention, at least if you're like me, you don't actually end up paying attention a lot to the the conversations that are going on themselves because you're so focused on, you know, not dying, not getting your ass fucked up. But IMC versus Militia, most likely Militia is going to be steamrolling the IMC. You actually, through playing these, uh, both of these campaigns, you actually can unlock new Titans. There's the Ogre. There's the Strider, I believe is what it's called, which is a, um, a lighter, faster um, Titan. And then there's the Atlas, which is the main Titan, which is actually the one you start off with. Uh, the Ogre actually is a more tank-like uh, Titan, which is what I'm getting in right now. It actually has a higher shield than what the, the normal Atlas does. And the Strider actually has even less health than the Atlas. It's basically made for speed. There's some things called the um, the boost bar, which is the little blue bar right in the bottom middle of my screen right there. You just saw it filled up. You can boost yourself forward a little bit. The Ogre, since it's a heavier, slower um, hitting Titan, it actually only has one bar. The Atlas, the standard Titan, has two of these bars. And then the Strider actually has three of these bars. So you can actually go pretty far and you actually get a boost how you see how I had the sh shield core online right there with the strider you actually get the um, the boost core online which actually pretty much gives you infinite um, boost so you can actually just boost all around the map and you're actually very quick in the strider but 
as I said, the balance of it, it seems to favor the IMC just in the campaign. Um, not when you play normal uh, versus modes. There's actually a few modes that I want to talk about now. You can actually, before you start doing the campaign, you can do just these modes. There's five modes. There's Attrition, Last Titan Standing, Hardpoint, Capture the Flag, and Pilot Hunter. There's also a thing you can do called Variety Pack, which is something like uh, Mosh Pit in Call of Duty. That just mixes all the game modes, so you join that and you'll shuffle through all the game modes. Now, Attrition is your basic team deathmatch. Um, there are bots in this game. So in attrition, you're basically going around to build up as many points for your team as you can. In attrition, the bots actually do count towards your um, your total score in winning the game. In Pilot Hunter, it only counts as the pilot kills that actually count for your team's overall score. That does not mean that there are no bots in this mode, because there are still bots in this mode. They just will not count towards your team's overall score. There is then capture the flag. Pretty simple. Steal the enemy flag and return it to your base while stopping the enemy team from grabbing your flag. Not too big. Um, there's also hard point, which is more of a domination um, if you played Call of Duty or Conquest if you're a Battlefield fan. Basically there's three caps on the map, um, there's three flags, three objectives on the map you go and you cap them um, while defending them and keeping the other teams from capping all your objectives. Capture and hold the three points in the map for your team to earn points. Um, then there, the last mode is Last Titan Standing. So in this mode everyone starts in a Titan and you simply eliminate all of the enemy's Titans to win. But once you die in this mode, there is no respawning until the next round. So you can actually get out of your Titan in this mode, but once your Titan gets destroyed, you cannot call in anymore. And once you die, you will no longer be able to respawn. So one last thing. There is, well, one last thing before I say my overall review on the game. There is a prestige system in this game. Now, obviously, Respawn Entertainment it branched off from um, the Call of Duty, the COD 4 makers, COD 4 and uh, Modern Warfare 2. That's why this game has a, a lot of similarities to Call of Duty. Uh, but in its own right, it is very different. Uh, if you're into more battlefield style, uh, high recoil, more um, skill based, then it's not going to be that sense in the gunplay. Uh, it's going to be more of the low recoil style, um, the guns, such as in Call of Duty. But as well as in Call of Duty, they have a prestige mode in this. Now, it is not called prestige mode, it's actually called generations. Now there are 10 generations that you can go through. All Now this does do the exact same thing as it would do in prestige mode. It completely wipes out all of your, um, your gun unlocks, your gun attachments, anything like that. You would actually have to redo all those just like in prestige mode in Call of Duty. I believe it takes 50 to 55 levels. I think is what it is. I think it's level 50 and you're able to prestige after that. Now obviously you do not have to prestige, but when you do prestige or if you choose to, you actually get a, um, a increase in XP. You get an XP boost um, for each level you go. So two, uh, after you prestige the first time, you'll actually be making a little bit more um, XP. And then once you prestige for the second time, you'll be making a little bit more XP on top of that. And so it makes it to where you don't have to completely start all the way over from the exact same experience points. It will actually make it go by a little bit faster. Um, but still, you're going to be grinding through it to get all that again. There are different little emblems for each uh, for each generation. I'm sorry, for each generation code. Um, they go up to level 10. So, for my actual opinion of the game, I actually believe the game to be very good. Um, now, I am I am a heavy Battlefield player. I've also played quite a bit of Call of Duty. Um, I actually prefer Battlefield over Call of Duty, so I was 
Um, I was worried that I might not like the gameplay on this as much, or I wouldn't spend as much time with it. It seems for me, anyway, that Call of Duty games I actually get bored with after a while. Compared to Battlefield, it just seems like it has a little bit more life to it. Uh, but this game actually seems very entertaining. I enjoyed playing it quite a bit. I never got bored once. Um, I actually ended up playing through the full IMC campaign, which it does not take very long. I think there's 12 missions, so 12 rounds, 12 matches. And during the campaign, it actually shuffles between different game modes. There's specific maps that you will be playing, and each one of those maps has a specific game mode for it. Now, that does not mean outside of the campaign that each map has a specific game mode, and you can only play that game mode. Um, one, if you're playing regular multiplayer, you can play any game mode on any map. But I do enjoy this game quite a bit. I actually do recommend that you um, that you try this. If you hadn't got a chance to play the beta, um, I would try picking this up. You can actually get this game at G2A for $47 right now. Um, the sale will end up uh, going away eventually, but you can get it. It'll probably stay around $50 on G2A, so you can pick it up there for a little bit cheaper. Um, you can get this game on Xbox One and PC. I believe you can also get this on Xbox 360, but not for the PlayStation. This is a, a Microsoft exclusive. So guys, I hope this um, this review has been helpful for you. If it has, don't forget to hit that like button. And also subscribe for more videos like this one. It really does help us out. And go ahead and share this video with your friends so we can get as many views on this. We are a new channel, so it does take us some time to build up our stuff. Alright guys, be sure to check us out in the next one, and I'll see you there.